Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Break trail with four men and a girl to the territory of the four men who live by killing. A girl who has experienced so much that only sadistic brutality can thrill her. Vicious and violent men attempting the most daring of daylight robberies, enjoying midnight revelries until one orgy turns into a nightmare of terror. Ride the ski lift to the very top in thrills. What I saw, you wouldn't believe. Watch men who deal in death, meet and fight. The invincible beast from haunted cave. Jack, you think's in a strong box? Mm. There's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. Here's what happened. The general beat his friend Castro to the Cuban treasury. The strong box is now on this boat. So are a deported American gangster and his mall. And lurking in the depths is the creature from the haunted sea. You're a crazy mixed up kid. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Don't worry, Mary Bell. I'll save you. It's all right. Be calm, everybody. The boat's insured.
There's a little brown church in the day. with the show. and meet me at the lift.
What's he doing? Not bad. Well, he whip it, you know. He always does. Always does what? Whatever he wants. Yes, sir, Mr. Alexander Wood is a very capable jet. Don't you uh, ever get thirsty? Not at 10 in the morning. Well, it was exactly at 10 a.m. that Mr. Martini invented the olive. That was terrific. Just terrific. It feels just like you're flying and you could keep on going forever. What a physically delightful idea. Sounds still ready? Still. Are you uh, ready for the Olympics yet? Gypsy, you really ought to try it. It's a brand new feeling. You mean I've missed one? Had enough for today? Yes, Gil. I'm expecting Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. They've been out seeing the sights. I hope the sights are tied down. Well, Mr. Jones and Mr. Smith want to take a lesson today? Yes, I think they'll... They'll probably be wanting to take one all night. Well, I doubt that. There's a cougar on a rampage in this area. I don't think I'd be frightened with you around. Mr. Jackson looks as though he could take care of anything, doesn't he, Alex? Happiness Lodge. Your place is well named, Gil. Thanks. I like it. Mighty hard place to get to, though. I like that, too. I bet you're hard to get to. Hello, Gil. Hi, boss. Have a good time? Good enough, boss. Boy, this place is great. We went through a barn full of horses, and we took Polaroid pictures of people skiing and fishing. <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, we found a mine. Gypsy and I are going back to the lodge. I think it might be a good idea for you two to stay up here and let Mr. Jackson show you the ropes. <laughs> well, he'll need one to hold him up. They'd better learn if we're going to make that cross-country run tomorrow. Drop by the lodge later. I'd like to take a look at those pictures. Right, boss. Let's go, Gypsy. What are you trying to do? Make that yokel suspicious? Did I say something wrong, my sweet? Someday I'm going to shut that pretty little mouth of yours for good. Promises. Nothing but promises. Oh, give me a home where the weightlifters roam, where the rough and the rugged ones play. Shut up! Richard's okay, boss? You could have gotten some more of the mine area. What's the vault like? <laughs> a cracker box with an iron door. <laughs> Fine. Well, boys, I think we got a classic going here. Marty, tonight you're going to go up and plant the charges in the mine, right? Right up. Tomorrow morning at 8.30, Gypsy is going to take the cowboy up on the ski lift to get him out of the way. At 9 o'clock, the mine blows. And everybody runs to see the disaster. It'll look big. Then we move into the administration building, make the heist, grab the ski lift, and meet the other two at the top for the trip. Simple. Simple as you, boy. So then we wait at Jackson's cabin till Tasser shows with the plane, right? Right. Come in. Hello, Gil. Hi. How are the leg muscles? <laughs> well, they're a little sore, but I think they're going to be all right. Good. Say, I need about $20 for supplies. Marty? I'd like you to reconsider taking this cross-country run. It's two days to the cabin. If anything happens, we're out of luck. Well, don't worry. If Byron breaks a leg, we can always shoot him. <laughs> Hi, Jackson. Did you get that cougar? Well, not yet, Miss Burlett. I I'll see you later. Won't you have a drink with us? Mr. Jackson has to get things ready for the trip tomorrow. We'd like to leave between 8 and 8.30. Is that all right, Gil? Well, it's fine. I'll see you later. Do people like that really exist? Not for you, Charles. Not for me, Charles, because I'm with you, Sam. 
You said it, Jane. All the happy little people enjoying their freedom. Do -si do and around we go. What kind of freedom is that? They're all tied down to their petty little futures. Might be nice to have a future, even a petty little one. What's bugging you, Charles? Don't you like the setup anymore? Anymore has been a long time. What's wrong? Nothing's changed. Maybe I have, Charles. What's with your friends? They're spending. Scotch on the rocks, three bourbons with branches, one daiquiri and two gin fizzes. Hi, Gil. Hi, Natalie. I feel like a little dance. Just stay put, Charles. Oops. <laughs> Howdy, cowboy. Howdy yourself. Where's Natalie? She was here a minute ago. Come on, nature boy. I want to dance. Woodsman, what goes on behind that big silent face of yours? Nothing clever enough to interest you, I'm afraid. Well, we don't have to be clever all the time. I can talk about the important things, like uh, nature. What do you think of nature, Gil? I guess it's pretty natural. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a girl? Two or three. Well, I don't think that's enough. What's that in there? Part of the broken boot mine. Oh, yeah? Let's go take a look. Nothing to see this time of night. Besides, it's kind of spooky in the dark. And they spin this big cat around. Well, this uh, baby will take care of any little uh, pussy cats. How come you pack a gun? Well, Gil Jackson told me about the cougar. Well, take a look. Come on. What are you going to do now? I've never seen a gold mine before. I want to take a look. Come on. You wait here.
ball down there? Uh-huh. Is that pretty blonde woman your wife? Well, she's my boss's, uh, secretary. Oh, I get it. She sure can do her share of drinking. You sure can do your share of talking. Set the charges. At nine o'clock. I mean, what's bugging you? You killed that good-looking chick. What chick? Natalie. You mean the girl that works in the bar? Gotta... You took that girl. I saw this egg right down in the shaft where I planted the charge. Alex, are you going to blow up that mine tomorrow? At nine o'clock. That means that you and Nature Boy will be at the top of the ski lift at 8.30. You're going to blow up that mine, kill all those people. Alex, you're nothing but a mass murderer. Go. Tomorrow's Sunday. Nobody works. You all set for the big adventure? You certainly look bright and shiny this morning. Are you expecting maybe a hangover? Well, certainly not a girl from a soap commercial. Good morning. Is it that time already? You were the one that said eight. I must have been out of my mind. I just checked on Marty and Byron. They're still out. Look, why don't you two go on up to the ski lift? The boys and I will have breakfast and join you later. No last chance to talk you out of this? What are the state police doing way up here? Oh, Natalie, the cocktail waitress, took off last night. Hasn't been seen since. Oh, I see. 
Well, look, why don't you two get started and we'll join you in about half an hour, okay? Okay, we'll be there. Shall we all? Very windy! Where do you get to the top? starting. Can we take more than six? Do it, please. That's all we can handle. Well, what do you think of me? What do you mean? Well, this is the first time you've seen me sober, isn't it? I'm paid to teach people how to ski, not to think about them. I'm always making scenes like that one last night. Don't you ever make scenes, Gil? I try not to. Well, you don't have to. You can go away to your cabin and burrow in the snow. Some people have all the luck. I think you make your own luck. I know you're wrong. Your luck makes you. I was your lucky once, and look what it did. Got a cigarette? antifreeze in my veins. You talk like a faded woman regretting a misspent life. Well.
How old are you, Gil? Thirty. Thirty. You like to ski, you like to be alone. Things about the same for you as they were ten years ago, right? Pretty much. Ten years ago, I was, uh, sixteen. Ten million years ago. You must have done a lot. I've done everything. So I have my whole life ahead of me. And yours is all used up. Not quite. There comes the rest of mine on that chair list. <laughs> Let's go. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. Are you sure you know what you're in for? This cross-country ski run is something I've been dreaming about ever since I was a little kid. When will you have a little kid, Charles? Everybody stick close and follow my lead. Okay, Gil. Here we go. Okay, Gil. <laughs> my neck all day. You need a haircut. Hey, you're getting pretty useless. <laughs> Don't laugh, Byron. That old tingling has saved many a trapper and prospector. Huh? Here's to the old tingling from an old prospector. What about that wood? Well, I said you, if I can get up here, the spirit's willing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, stay put. I'll uh, be back in a few minutes. While I'm gone, you can start packing down the snow. Yeah. What's hitting you? Hey, you gotta forget that girl. I'm not thinking about her. Or what are you thinking about? The thing that got her. Now, it saw me and it means to get me. And that's what's been following us. You're a bundle of cheer. You better snap out of it fast, smart boy. Yeah, sure. You know, day after tomorrow, Tass is going to come out here with a ski plane, and we're off to Canada to spread it loose. You knock off the funny talk with nature, boy. Can't stop me from talking. Don't tempt me.
matter? Marty! Look at his face! Marty, what happened? What happened? Oh, nothing. Go back to sleep. Why don't you turn in? I'll take the rest of your watch. Nobody takes my watch. I still got two hours left to go, and I don't want to be a burden on anybody. Finish your watch, and I'm going back to the sack. Anybody that wants to stand watch has got to be a cook. I'm going back to sleep before the next thrilling episode. Are you sure you're all right? I don't mind. I that. told you, I'll take the watch. tracks. I've never seen anything like it before. Must have passed through here during the night. You were on guard last night. What happened? Nothing you can handle. What kind of an answer is that? You were on guard all last night. Did you see something or didn't you? What I saw, you wouldn't believe. Look, I'm getting sick and tired of this. What did you see last night? Nothing. Maybe I can help you to remember. Oh, that would be nice. We could take turns sitting up with him and his friend. Come on, Alex, let's go. <laughs> I think I know why Byron eats like that. Why is that? He has to keep himself stuffed to prevent his brain from slipping down his throat into his stomach. <laughs> now let's pause for a brief look at the news. The biggest story to hit the Black Hills since the murder of Wild Bill Hickok was Sunday's sensational robbery at the Broken Boot Mine in Deadwood. What? Authorities believe the bandits could not have left the vicinity by the single daily train and therefore must be hiding out somewhere in the area. Police also believe that the simultaneous mine explosion in which watchman Leonard Wilsey lost his life was in some way connected with the robbery, perhaps as a diversion. In a moment, the weather. Can you beat that? It must have happened right after we left. Yes, or we'd have heard about it. The weatherman says snow and heavy overcast for Deadwood and Lead all day Tuesday with strong winds Wednesday, possibly clearing Thursday. And now, back to Gil. music and a mellow mood. Will the weather be the same here as it is in town? Just about. I hope it clears for the trip back. Better clear tomorrow. Why tomorrow? We're staying here, remember? Well, I've never cut a buffalo rug before. Well, I hope I'm sharp enough. 
What do you do up here on these long winter nights, Gil? Read, mostly. What kind of stuff? Sometimes I just flip open the encyclopedia. Something interesting on almost every page. Don't you ever have a yen to cut out and make the big city? What for? Well, that's living. Really? I went to San Francisco once. I was there for about a week. I think I saw just about everything there was to see in that length of time. Didn't like it? Oh, no, it was wonderful. But there's something about these mountains and trees, wind, it makes everything else kind of insignificant. Well, I guess it takes all kinds. It's your turn, Mountain Man. Man, man, mountain, 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 man. I think you're lovely. off, Miss Bullett. I'll treat my secretary any way I feel like it. You can keep your nose out of it. Unless you want a 38 caliber nose job. Where are you going? It'll be fun taking care of that joker. Nothing moves till the plane gets here. And I'll take care of myself. But if you're not doing anything, you can go outside and build a fire. Keep it going. Just in case that idiot Tasser tries to come in ahead of the storm. Gypsy? with a big try, Galahad. Fortunately, I do that sort of thing all the time. Alex had a perfect right to slap me. Maybe I'll kill him someday, but I can't blame him for being sore. Why don't you get out? That's what I keep telling myself. But I know I'll never have the guts. I've become part of Alex. Maybe a sick part, but a permanent one. What are you really afraid of? I was an underpaid model in a wholesale house. And I met Alex. He was young and loaded. I liked the way he pushed me around. I liked it then. And now it's too late to go back. And I don't know if I really want to go back. I don't know what I want. But I know I'd rather have Alex than nothing at all. You're selling yourself short. Well, there's a law of supply and demand, mister. And I don't hear any bidders.
take it easy, huh? I'm sorry, baby. I'm not Florence Nightingale. Don't these backwood stations have any news during the night? Why are you so concerned with the news? It affects business. There's a threat of war. People stop buying fireworks. What's it to you? In a moment, the weather. Which leads them to believe they are still in the area. There are no further clues. On the weather picture, forecast is warned that the new low moving in from Canada will bring blizzards to portions of the Dakotas sometime before Wednesday noon. In other parts of the country... Blizzards. What's your worry? It might not come anywhere near here. Meanwhile, we can take it easy. Or are you in a hurry to get somewhere? What's that supposed to mean? Just a question. There you go. I'll fix that. Thanks, Chance. Huh? Hot milk and graham crackers. For me? You were very brave. Never better. It was a pretty dumb stunt you pulled. I pulled it on my own time. What time? You've got a 24-hour-a-day job. Yeah. Well, my business with that baby outside is strictly personal. It's the most personal thing that's ever happened to me. So far. Any more questions? No. Take him to bed. Chicago. Well, about 200. Why? You must have quite a turnover. Good night. Tasser? You won't try to make it with a storm coming up. Doesn't make any difference anyway. Let's take a walk. Work is a beautiful thing when somebody else is doing it. Try it sometime. Hey, give me the axe. You'd probably chop your leg off. Oh, it's a leg one way or the other. Well, it wouldn't matter if it was just any old leg. I didn't think you'd notice. Gil, I'm beginning to understand how you feel about this place. It's comfortable and warm. At night, I like to listen to the wind trying to get in. You think it ever will? Not while I've got two hands to hold it back. Gil, you know, they're going to kill you. You don't seem very surprised. No, I'm not. they figure to get out of here? There's a plane coming. It was due this morning. Probably delayed by the weather. Then we were going to go to Canada. We're going? I would like to stick around if you'd have me. I haven't really thought about it. It's not true. Well, maybe not completely. Well, I didn't know anything about that killing until I heard it over the radio. You don't know me, and I don't know you at all. You got it in your mind you want to return to nature, and I'm part of it. But what happens when you get bored? How do you know what I think? 
I don't know. I wish I did. I know one thing for sure. I'm sending Small Dove back to her relatives. And I'm heading back to blow the whistle on your friends. If you still want to come along, meet me between 6 and 6.30 on the ridge where we first saw the cabin. sure is flip. He's dangerous. Do you really think he saw something? <laughs> yeah, pink snowman. <laughs> hey, boss, I found it. Found what? The cougar's cave. Went hunting. Hunting at night? Left about four, hunting a deer. Venison? Sounds great. When was the last time we had venison, Alex? Well, uh, two years ago at the Key Club. At the Key Club? Mm -hmm. Chicago. You can only afford venison on your birthday, Alex. Out here, all it takes is a sense of nature and a strong hand on the trigger. Running off at the mouth tonight. Why don't you drink and get fractured? It'd be normal. What did we do on my birthday that year, Alex? Your birthday? When is my birthday, Alex? Can't remember. Well, that year we spent my birthday in Florida. Pulled a bankroll robbery at the Miami Fireworks Company. Oh, yeah, I remember. Killed two birds with one stone. Got 150 grand and put the southern competition out of business. Many happy returns. You're acting mighty peculiar tonight. What are we going to do after this job, Alex? Oh, same things we always do. Why? I've got an idea. Why not retire? Retire? You're a rich man, Alex. Pick the bones of a thousand boobs who happen to have enough money to catch her eye. They don't have to take chances anymore. Why not quit? Sure, I'm a rich man, Charles. I'm urinating high because of it. I pick the bones of a thousand boobs, and I'll pick the bones of a thousand more because they are boobs, and they deserve exactly what they get. That old man deserved what he got. Every day, some old man steps in front of a car. I'll send flowers, but I'll never quit. Well, that's that. Here's a late highway warning. The west side of Strawberry Canyon Road is now closed, and will be for at least another hour. Motorists are again warned not to drive unless absolutely necessary. I guess it is. expected to last through the night. And now a request for Mrs. Bertie Arnold in Deadwood from the Music Memory Album. Where are you going, Charles? For a walk, Charles. Follow her. Hey, boss. I just figured it out. It's Pa. What's Pa? 
Uh, I'm against the wall. <laughs> it's been driving me crazy. Uh, get out of here. Where's she going? To be away. I gotta follow her. No, you stay with me. Hey! Hey! Wait, this ain't no time for romance. Are you hungry? Look, sweetheart, I gotta follow her. The boss told me. Thanks for coming. You really mean that? I usually mean what I say. How do you know I'm not just trying to save my own skin? It'd be easier for you to tell Alex and let him finish me. It would have been easier, but it would have been impossible. We better get started before the blizzard. Long way back. Snap out of it, Byron. Snap out of it. I see that you gentlemen have changed your ideas about my eyesight. Shut up. It got small down. Well, maybe it'll be satisfied with it. Not by a long shot. It knows who it's after. We're gonna do so. We'll do nothing but stay put. It hasn't tried to get into the cabin yet. As a matter of fact, it ran from us. It didn't run from us. It ran from the fire that Byron threw at it. Well, it doesn't make any difference what chased it away. We, we, we're out here on a job. We can't afford to have any nightmares. Okay, okay. I never saw such an animal. What is it? I saw pieces of an egg in the mine. Where it got Natalie. Now that could have been buried there for millions of years until the men working on the well, mine found it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it chews up the whole state. I don't care if it came from Mars or happened by spontaneous combustion. We're going to Canada with a load of gold, so forget it. It'll get us. It'll get nothing. It got small, though. Probably get Gypsy, too. Gypsy? Where is she? I saw her leaving on her skis. Cowboy didn't come back yet either. Gypsy and the cowboy. They deserve each other. Where do you think they went? Uh, probably went back to town. I'm going to get some soup. Should probably tell him about the robbery. I'll get the skis ready. We never catch him now. What are we gonna do? I'll probably run into that blizzard pretty soon. And I'll either have to hold up or turn back. With the giant cave right near here. That's the only place they can hold up. How do you know about the cave? That's where I follow the cougar. All right. Let's try it. We beat the storm. 
Not a chance. Well, what do we do? We'll have to turn back. I knew it was too good to be true. I knew I'd never get away. Now, don't worry. We're not whipped yet. I know of a haunted cave not far from here. If you're not afraid of ghosts, we'll wait there till the storm blows over. Anytime your broomstick is ready. Hey, Byron, knock it off. Hey, meathead, I'm hungry. Can't hear you, boss. Why not? He left? Huh? Where would that imbecile go? Don't ask me, boss. Maybe he's chasing that Indian squaw. You know, Jackson told me that the uh, Black Hills are sacred Indian country. Heap bad medicine for evil men from foreign lands. <laughs> they must have heard we were coming. We don't need Byron. I don't think we need anybody. Go back. Go back. I come to help you. You can't help now. I gotta work fast. Is she still alive? Yes, but she has no mind. Cowboy to leave these things laying around. <laughs> what are they? Very pistols. What are they for? They used to fire flares. They can be seen from miles away. They're going to signal anybody. Well, we can use them to light the cave, can't we? Okay. Small dog. Got a chance. Marty's coming. He knows the monster's here. 
He's gonna get it. It's sucking her blood.
It's coming. Here it comes. It's intermission time. Time to visit our concession stand. Show starts in 10 minutes. We are about to witness the takeoff of the first manned rocket to outer space. We pick up the count. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We're off to visit the planets. There are treats galore in the stars. Venus is loaded with candy. And ice cream is found upon Mars. The soda pumps isn't on Saturn. When you're thirsty, it sure is the spot. And Jupiter's really chomping. With popcorn that's buttered and hot. But the best of them all is the planet where all of these treats are at hand. And that is the spot we now head for, our theater refreshment stand. Show starts in nine minutes. Hey, Mom. Yes, you. Why fuss and fret about dinner? Why not have it right here? Yes, this drive-in offers everyone in the family a real picnic treat for dinner. We've got delicious sandwiches with all the trimmings and your other dinner favorites, plus whatever you want to drink, hot or cold. Come early before the show starts, or eat while you're being entertained, or at intermission time. So why fuss? Give your family a tasty dinner at this drive-in. starts in eight minutes. It's refreshment time, folks. Time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. First quenching, refreshing, ice-cold drinks. Crispy, crunchy, melt-in-your-mouth popcorn. Tender, tasty hamburgers with all the trimmings. Crisp, Golden brown French fries. Pizza. Fresh baked taste delight for young or old. Fresh brewed hot coffee. As you like it. Show starts in seven minutes. How do you like your pizza? Gobbled? Nibbled? Two-fisted style. you like ours best anyway. A crisp, delicate crust topped with our own special nippy tomato sauce, seasoned just the way you like it, and lots of golden Italian cheese melted right in. Delicious, and on sale now at the refreshment center. Pizza, piping hot and tangy. How about some right now? Show starts in six minutes. Time now for your barbecue break. Treat yourself right now to that good old southern style, just right barbecue. Steeped in taste tingling barbecue sauce made just right from fresh, firm choice ingredients. The recipe handed down for generations and cooked southern style to tender perfection. Slowly, hour after hour, capturing the taste tempting barbecue flavor. It's just right tender goodness, generously spooned on a fresh, soft bun for you. Mmm, it's hard to wait. It smells so good. And oh boy, it is lip-smacking good. Here it comes, your southern-style just right barbecue on a bun with all the delicious trimmings. A snack to remember. Enjoy it now along with your choice of hot or cold drinks. 
It's a favorite of all the family. Prepared and served just right. Only thing better than this barbecue sandwich is the next one. Just try the best barbecue in the land that made barbecue famous. It's southern style, just right barbecue. <laughs> Show starts in five minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The management of this drive-in theater is happy to announce you can enjoy your favorite form of movie entertainment regardless of rain. No longer will it be necessary to let rain spoil your fun. Now you can keep your windshield clear and dry with a drizzle guard. Simply attach it to your windshield, and in a jiffy you're enjoying the movie without constantly running your windshield wipers. A drizzle guard will save you gasoline and wear and tear on your battery. After the show is over, all you do is take off your drizzle guard, roll it up, and it's ready to be used again, just like an umbrella. So next time it rains, don't sizzle in a drizzle. Get yourself a drizzle guard and enjoy the show. Drizzle guards are on sale now at the concession center. In the mood for hot coffee? When you are, nothing else will satisfy. Coffee has a flavor, an aroma, a deep down satisfying goodness all its own. And our coffee has something extra, the care with which we brew and serve it. You'll enjoy the show more while you're enjoying steaming hot coffee. Come and get yours now. Show starts in four minutes. Don't be alarmed, folks. That's only the sound of our giant-sized kernels of popcorn exploding into tasty life. Just look at that. Popped from the finest popcorn anywhere, then heaped into a giant-sized container, salted and seasoned just so. Nothing hits the spot like popcorn. And wouldn't some taste good right now? You'll find it at the refreshment center. Crisp, hot, delicious popcorn. Go ahead. Get some. Attention, please. A $50 reward will be paid for information leading to the arrest and conviction of anyone caught stealing our speakers. If you accidentally pull a speaker loose, don't worry. Just turn it in. There is no charge, and we'll appreciate it. Show starts in three minutes. in two minutes. Most of us will spend Memorial Day weekend with our families, watching parades, picnicking, golfing, just doing the things we enjoy. To top off a perfect weekend, may we suggest you see our special holiday show. It's an exceptionally entertaining program. So plan to relax and spend a few enjoyable hours with the family at this theater during the Memorial Day weekend. Everyone wants a neat, well-kept home. This young housewife, too. But look what she does with the things she has no more use for. Lady, a closet can hold only so much. 
Actually, there's a much better way to dispose of such things with a familiar Goodwill bag. Nonprofit Goodwill Industries uses your clothing, household articles, toys, and other items to provide training and jobs for handicapped men and women who will fix them up for sale in a Goodwill store. When the bag's filled, call your Goodwill Industries. A Goodwill truck will come around to pick it up. Goodwill Industries can't use some things, big, unrepairable items, and little children. He yours, lady? Use the Goodwill way to help yourself and the handicap too. Show starts in one minute. with the show. I had to go to the Santa Domingo bar, and I had to find Agent XK120, whom I'd never met. I looked around the room. 
Long training and my own instinct told me that the girl sitting at the table seemed the most likely prospect. Is that supposed to be a political remark? I don't know anything about politics. Do you play? I never work if I can help it. I meant chess. It's a very interesting game. So is this one we're playing. Would you like a drink? I wouldn't mind. Waiter, bring us a bottle of Chateau Marmont, 1907. 1911 was a better year. 1911 it is. We don't have any Chateau Marmont, but we have a good Chateau Briand, 1922. Forget it. Make it a couple of rum cones, kilo 58. Please sit down. I had to be sure it was you. XK120? Right. XK150? Right. Who's the waiter? One of them. Thinks I'm on their side. She was beautiful. I could have killed myself for wearing this stupid disguise. Now she would never know me as I really am. Tonight, we'll keep in touch by radio. You have the code. In point of fact? Yes. In point of fact? Yes. In point of fact, I've got my Dakota ring. Right. Pay no attention to me when I leave. Right. Gonna kiss me goodbye? Right. The most improbable event of the 20th century occurred in Havana, Cuba. The revolutionary victors marched in and the national complexion changed completely. They had been liberated. The survivors of the old regime escaped as best they could, taking with them only a few meager effects, such as the Cuban treasury and other art objects. It wasn't always easy to smuggle a loot out of Cuba. And so, secret meetings were being held all over the island. This story of robbery, double cross, and murder begins with just such a meeting.
Renzo Capetto? I am. Who are you? Never mind who I am. It's the mission that counts. Let's get on with it. As an American gambler and gangster, you're above suspicion. Of course, you know that our government has been overthrown. You know, I heard that. Shut up. But not for long. We'll be back. And if you think you're seeing executions now, oh boy. Bravo. Bravissimo. Shut up. But of course, in order to uh, finance a great counter-revolution, it has been necessary for us to uh, steal the Cuban treasure. Hurrah! Shut up. Let us proceed. You're going to lose your casino, so you'll be leaving Cuba anyway. You have a big yacht, and you can leave any time you wish, such as immediately. Therefore, I'm going to entrust you a solemn trust. Here we have one-fourth of the Cuban treasure. Your group, General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, and a squad of men will proceed to Ciudad Trujillo. There you'll wait for us to contact you and relieve you of the money. One-fifth of which will be paid to you. Do you understand? I get the whole picture. Now you do the rest. Señores. General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, Señor Renzo Capetto y... Uh... My name is Happy Jack Monahan. Glad to meet you, Jim. Mis buenos amigos americanos, nos cabe el honor de preservar el honor del honor cubano. En un solemne acto de confianza han confiado en nuestras confiables manos ese botín con el cual reconstruiremos todo lo que Castro piensa construir. Yo os saludo. And now, the gold. You two had better get into the car. The general doesn't English, Senor Capetto. I'll be his translator for you. Bueno? Bueno. Bueno. Metas al auto. Now it's time to go. Adios. Adios. I'll see you later, huh? Bro. first move in the great conspiracy had been made. The Cuban treasury was now in the gentle hands of Renzo Capetto, the most trustworthy man ever to be deported from Sicily. They thought they were smart, but little did they know that I, Sparks Moran, was an American agent. Luckily, I had been able to work my way into the crew by posing as a notorious gum machine burglar from Chicago. My real name is XK-150. Hey, you. Come on down here and help with this. How'd it go, Bubsy? We had a hairy little chase, but we got the stuff. Crazy. Hey, Colonel Grande, you can bring your men aboard. What happens with all that mob? I don't know. I thought we'd just have an officer or two, but it looks like we're gonna have a little difficulty. You think of a way to remove them and grab that loot? Because you're my big, strong, swinging brain. Mm -hmm. You're sweet, baby. Hi, sis. Hi, baby doll. Did they scare you? Ah, uh, just a little. Oh. All right, boys. Get ready to go. Pete, take the wheel. Jack, you and uh, 
Clarks, uh, Sparks, get ready to cast off. Well, well, this is a beautiful night for sailing. And so we left Cuba forever, sailing into the most astounding adventure to be inflicted upon man. And what a group we were. The big cheese was Renzo Capetto, alias Capo Rosetto, alias Rado Pizzetti, alias Zeppo Staccato, alias Shirley Lamour. At 15, he served his first stretch for rolling a drunk in the lobby of the Waldorf Astoria, New Year's Eve, 1934. In 1940, he was involved in an unsuccessful attempt to nominate Benito Mussolini for the Republican ticket. During the war, he was rejected by the Navy, Marines, and the SS. Now deported, he has retained his contacts with the Syndicate and is still regarded as a dangerous character. Mary Bell Monahan, alias Mary Monahan Bell, alias Bell Mary Monahan, alias Monahan Mary Bell. They say she was a gun mall just because Lucky Luciano gave her a Rolls Royce every Christmas. And they can't really prove that she sneaked into the Hollywood Bowl with a Tommy gun and rubbed out the convention of police chiefs in 1956. Oh, I know that she got nailed cold when she was pushing heroin in the laundry room at Boys Town. But I'm willing to give anyone the benefit of the doubt especially when she's as crazy looking as Mary Bell. This is Happy Jack Monahan, so called because he developed a muscle spasm in his cheeks from watching too many Humphrey Bogart pictures. Happy Jack's record is brief. His only crimes having been committed after his sister, Mary Bell, talked Renzo into giving him a job. Up until that time, Happy Jack had been a tennis bum, sleeping under the bleachers at Forest Hills and mooching nickels in the BMT subway. Since taking up with Renzo, he has become a well-known dice loader and murderer. The most obscure member of the Dark Quartet is Pete Peterson, Jr., son of Pete Peterson, Sr., famed vaudeville bird mimic. Pete, Jr. inherited his father's talent for animal imitations, but unfortunately blew his brain out of whack while imitating a whooping crane at the Elks Convention picnic in Oshkosh in 1942. Since then, anyone has been able to convince Pete of anything. Renzo found him struggling along as a pickpocket at Jones Beach and took him with him in his exile. Since then, he has been Renzo's faithful servant, shining his shoes and rubbing out his enemies. In return, Renzo permits him to imitate any animal that comes into his head. That, for instance, was the mating call of the Himalayan yak. There they are my shipmates. I didn't know where they were taking those unsuspecting Cubans, but I knew they were taking them. And so, with grim faces, we set our helm against the perilous future. Okay, now before I begin, does anyone anything to say? Pete? How about you, Jack? What do you think we should do? You up? Oh, now, honey, is that any way for Mary Bell's big man to talk? Now, look, we've got to get rid of at least half of these Cubans without making the rest of them suspicious. There used to be a Cuban fisherman by the name of Hemingway. He got hooked on a sea monster in these waters a couple of years ago, and he was dragged for miles. Got a lot of publicity. We're going to show these boys the greatest sea monster they ever saw in their lives. Jack, in my trunk, there's some garden rakes used for weeding tomatoes. You get them and, and sharpen them like scalpers. Pete, you mix up a mess of olive oil and green ink and snag some seaweed from over the side. Now, Jack, what are you going to do? Sharpen up the garden rakes? Good boy. Pete, how about you? Does he have to do that? All right, Jack, do that. We've had a good 
good life together, haven't we, baby? Mm, you know it, Boops. Winters in Tijuana, summers in Cicero. Remember that wonderful trip we took to Monte Carlo? You mean at the time we heisted all those hundred dollar chips? Sure. I'll admit, I couldn't really hear anything through that door, but I was sure they were up to no good. I knew it was up to me to stop them. Now we're off again to parts unknown. It's like a second honeymoon. You know something? We ought to get married. Now don't be a drag, baby. <laughs> How much Jack do you think's in that strong arm? There's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. What are we gonna do with all of it? I don't know. I always wanted to open up a home for the aged hoodlums. Baby, you got a heart as big as all outdoors. A government agent lives in constant peril. I devised my undetectable radio set using simulated hot dogs for knobs and tubes inside of dill pickles while watching a number of sewer workmen during lunch hour. It comes in mighty handy, believe you me. One little slip and I could be headed for Davy Jones' locker. Hello, Havana, this is Agent XK-150. Over. I'm making my first official report. So far, not too much has happened, but I'm anticipating. Renzo Capetto and his gang are on board as suspected. I am with them. I will call you again soon, one of these days. This is Agent XK-150, signing off. Hey, what's happening? Just having a bite. Gee, that looks good. Do you mind if I join you? Encantadora y hermosa María Puta. The general says, Good morning, you gorgeous, beautiful creature. Would you ask the general to remove himself from my presence? Um, ella dice que muy buenos días para usted, mi general. Usted para mí es como una flor del mar, como un ángel de Neptuno sonriéndole al mundo. The general says you are a, um, you are a golden angel flower singing. Would you tell the general that I feel that he'd be most at home, barbecuing slowly over a hot spit? Um, ella dice que mi general es un hombre muy digno y de gran empuje. You must be a glutton for punishment. Oh. <laughs> oh, now, what do you want? You're too good for this life. You're young and you're innocent. You should get out. All I get you is good. Are you unwell? The getting is great. You're a victim of circumstance. I try. I do try. You're a crazy mixed up kid. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Now, what is your story? Oh, well, you see, I'm beyond help, but you're not. You can find a clean young man to marry and... I haven't got the time. But I can help you marry Belle. You can turn blue. Don't worry, Mary Belle. I'll save you. I die. 
That's a comforting alternative. A secret agent should never sleep, but there I was, dreaming of mom's apple pie, while up on deck, Renzo and his cutthroats were taking the first step, killing an innocent Cuban, and pretending some imaginary monster did it, just so they would be panicked into changing course, so that Renzo could steer them to his own picked destination. Give the alarm. But what none of us knew was that the monster invented by Renzo had already been invented by somebody else. By a couple of other monsters, I guess. sucedido aquí anoche. Dos de vuestros compañeros han sido cobardemente asesinados. Debemos encontrar al que cometió este cobarde asesinato para que esto no vuelva a suceder. What did he say? Did you know what happened? Well, I have an idea if you'd like to hear. Please go ahead. Well, I don't think it was anything human that killed your soldier. I've seen the tracks and the claw wounds on their bodies. Now, in my studied opinion, those soldiers were attacked by some weird creature from the sea. You came in, did your boys in, and vanished again. <laughs> What's so funny? That creature, how silly. Did you really think it is? <laughs> what is la gracia? Este estúpido gringo cree que Alejandro lo mató un monstruo que salió del... ¡Silencio! Este estúpido gringo tiene razón. Yo creo que esto solo ha sido hecho por un anfibio desconocido de aguas desconocidas. Cures, Colonel. Well, uh, the general says, uh, you're right, it is the most. Estas aguas son muy peligrosas. Debemos trazar una nueva ruta. The general says these waters are very dangerous, so we must plot a new course. Ve de vuelta a la derecha. Ya. De frente, marchen. Catch that? Our brave general Tostado didn't miss an excuse to blow the trip and change course. You think he's got a glint in his eye? Pure gold. Maybe one won't have to knock them all off. Oh. You boys are getting careless. I told you to kill one, not two. What's that? I got your count? Okay, Pete. Now, take the wheel. Well, gee, I, I thought it was only one. Well, I can't figure this out. So we were going somewhere I didn't know. Washington didn't know. Renzo didn't know. We all had to find out. Now, gentlemen, I think we ought to make our decision. Skull! Now, has anybody got an idea? About what? About where we're going. I thought it was to Ciudad Trujillo we were going. Oh, no, no. That's been changed. Well, General Tostado thinks we ought to change course in order to escape the monster. Eh, por fin, ¿dónde vamos, General? Caracas, Venezuela. No. Oh, no, no. I think we ought to go eh, to... Let's go to India. I've always wanted to see a second Actually, I think we ought to go to Cannes. It really swings this time of the year. Yeah, will you listen? 
so strange, my friends. I always had a secret desire. I always wanted to go to Bali, you know? Bali? Bali! Bali! We are not going to Bali. Caracas, Venezuela. No. Please tell the general that I am convinced we ought to go to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Él dice que está convencido el único sitio puede ir es a San Juan de Puerto Rico. This is Agent XK-150 calling Agent XK-120 via 190SL. Come in, Havana. Now, the first thing we've got to think about is to escape this pinky monster. Now, if you take a look at the chart, you'll notice there's a lot of deep water just north of Puerto Rico. Too deep for the monster to live in. Well, how do you know he can't live in deep water? Because of his feet. He's a walker and he's got to stay at the bottom. All right, stupid? Right, stupid. Now, when we get to Puerto Rico, we'll take the strong box ashore. Now, as an American, I won't be noticed. I'll take a plane up to Ciudad Trajillo. Take the box with me. I can say unequivocally, without the slightest qualm of doubt, that this gang is heading for Bali. I think the government should watch for us at the Panama Canal. Over. Que no perderé de vista esa caja. The general says it's all right. We may go to Puerto Rico. But he won't keep the strong box out of his sight. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> What do you make of it, Sparks? Looks like a Portuguese fishing vessel to me. Good guess. But you're wrong. The Cuban Coast Guard. It looks like they're coming this way. Maybe they're looking for the gold. Hey, Pete. Tell Tostada and his men to stay below. Sparks, see if you can catch a fish. Everybody keep your guns handy. I don't have any guns. Mary Bell, give him one of your guns. Ow! Give him one of your guns, Mary Bell. Now, let's appear casual. Mary Bell, sing a song. Kiss me, baby. 
Americans on a pleasure trip out here. Well, I don't think you've got any authority to search this ship. I think this gives us the authority to search this boat. Well, as you see, there's nothing on board. I haven't seen anything. I'm going to take a look down below. He didn't sound like a Cuban to me. I figured in this situation I'd better stick with Renzo, so I decided to knock out the leader of the Cubans with a fish I had on the end of my line. Sparks! Hey, good work, Pete. Listen, we better check the boat and see if there are any others. Mary Bell, you can stop singing now. You have this terrific voice. Oh, if I could only push you overboard. Your talents are being allowed to molder away unknown to humanity. You could be a star. The toast of three continents, your name in lights. Let me take you away and deliver you. I just can't believe that you're real. She was madly in love with me, only she didn't know it yet. I think I smell land. Are we almost there? Oh, about six or eight hours. Another lucky shooter. Pause the point. You're ravishing. You're sick. Listen, I have a plan. As soon as we get there, we'll wait for night. And when Renzo isn't looking, we'll jump off and swim for shore through shark-infested water so no one will follow us. Then we'll steal a sailing dinghy and head for Brazil. How do you like it? I think it's grand. You ought to do it. Well, I'm, I meant you, too. Honey, I wouldn't ride on the same bus with you. Now, Pete, I want you to listen carefully. Now, on the north coast of the Big Island is a teeny speck of land called La Isla del Borracho, named after one of Columbus's lieutenants. It should be deserted by now. We ought to be able to land there, huh? <laughs> Good. Now, there's a reef around the island and a very narrow opening which we have to go through. I am going to run this yacht on the rocks right at the entrance. Now, during the panic, we'll take the strong box, load it on a skiff, and head for shore. Now, Pete, when we get over 30 feet of water, I'll give you a signal. And then I want you to capsize the boat. You understand? Later, Pete, we'll come back and dive for it. You understand everything? Sure. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll hit the rocks. And then we put the box in a skiff, uh -huh. and then we dump it over 30 feet of water, so we can come back and get it. And that's because it's filled with natural glycerin. It shouldn't be on board anyway. Isle of Morocco. Look at the reefs.
starting through. Come, everybody. The boat's insured. Everything went according to plan. Renzo's and the monsters. Row, row, row your boat gently up the creek. Merrily, 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 I'm going to be sick. You know, this reminds me of one time on Lake Minnetonka. Louise Schmidt and I were paddling along, when what do you think happened? General says you have your order as soon as he can estimate the situation. Well, you can tell El General Gotta be through giving orders around here. Now look, you men have no money and you have no guns and you're on U.S. soil. That's all right, I'm on your side. Pete, I want you to search the island and see if anybody lives here. Jack, you take one of the lifeboats and row to shore. Make your way to San Juan and rent us a fishing boat and plenty of diving gear. Uh-huh. Come on, boys. Oh, Colonel, you see if you can get your men to build us a lean-to or something to keep the rain off. Attention! The frente! March it! Un, dos, un, dos, un, dos, un, dos, un, dos. Venía, alto! Ahora todos a trabajar. Quiero! Good day here forever. That won't be necessary, baby. Why? Well, the way I figure it, these Cubans aren't very much at diving. But Jack, Pete, and I are all pretty good spear fishermen. We'll go down, find the strong box, and hide it in a hole in the reef. After that, we'll tell the Cubans that it's no use. Give up. It'll be safe there for months, even years, until we're ready to come back and get it. You like it? Booksy, sometimes you are so smart you make me sick.
operator. Get me Havana, Cuba, 652314. Uh, Cuba. Six, cinco, duo, tres, uno, cuatro. Uh, oh, listen, I, I don't have the right change, so would you uh, mind uh, charging that to my home phone, which is in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, in the USA? It is 762691. Uh, Estada Unida, Washington, uh, seis, uh, seis, a duo, seis, nueve, duo, duo, whatever. Um, right, thanks a lot. The service is terrific. Hello, Santa Domingo Bar. Is there a girl there playing chess? You're right, I want to talk to her. Hello. I'll give you all my utilities and all my railroads for Park Place. Not a chance. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect your $200. XK120? Right, XK150? Right. Listen, I, uh, I can't really talk now. I don't know exactly what's happening or where I am. But I have the feeling that this case is about to bust wide open. I can't talk now. Someone's waiting to use the phone, but I'll keep in touch. Did you get that? Repeat the last part of that message. I'll keep in touch. Did you get that? Right. Which way do I turn this Dakota pin? Left. Left? Right. Right. Happy returns of the day. Oh, isn't that a ring you're wearing, Miss? Porcina Perez. It's a wedding ring. Come on, Vector. Hello. Get 
safety equipment. All about 20 bottles, 10 regulars, masks, spear guns, the works. Overdid it as usual. Well, okay, we're gonna start diving this afternoon. I brought something else on with me, too. No, porque pongan todo eso ahí otra vez, vamos a muy... Carmelita, I'd like you to meet Renzo Capetta, my sister Mary Bell, Mr. Pete Peterson, and, well, I don't know who the large woman with him is. Fortina Perez. Hi. Hello, everybody. You found this woman in San Juan? Well, she was living in a sort of sorority house down by the docks. She's awful friendly. Why don't you come on with me, honey? I'll show you our sorority house. Senor Capero, I have the honor to report that my men will be ready in one hour. Ready for what? To dive to the Strandbox. You mean your men are divers? Yes, they are Cuban Army frogmen. Olé. I had the situation well in hand. Mary Bell was weakening, as I'm sure you've noticed. Then she came into my life. I didn't see her coming, but somehow I sensed her presence and knew that my life was changed forever. Hello, who are you? Carmenita Rodriguez. Sparks Moran. As a trained espionage agent, I could tell that she was attracted to me. But I wanted Mary Bell. And Mary Bell wanted Renzo. And Renzo wanted the gold. Idiot! Let's keep this thing firm! You all right? Oh, yes! Yeah. All right, we're ready. What's the Cuban army? I don't know, but I'm ready. Vamos a soldar los cubanos! A sumergirnos! A sumergirnos! The search for the strong box had begun, but the sea was cluttered up with Cubans, dispersed by General Tostada to search independently. All those Cubans alone in the deep. This was a chance for Renzo to again become the sea monster. A lonely Cuban had found one of the many wrecks on the bottom. and Renzo had found the lonely Cuban. was cleanly executed. The victim was dead. The killers delighted, but not satisfied. Renzo must have another quart of Latin blood. We waited, sensing the dangers below, while the unholy three sought new prey.
it didn't take them long to find it. No, it was a monster. Oh, you mean a monster? A real, live, honest to goodness monster with claws and everything. Oh, you're nuts. Hold this way. Carmelita, it's too dangerous for you here. Let's run away and live a little. No, no, I'm in love with Sparks. Sparks Moran? Let's see. Well, how can you be in love with him? He's an idiot. You ought to be in love with me. No, I'm in love with him. And I don't care if he'll never see you again. Oh, if I'd only paid my life insurance premium, I'd kill myself. Oh, no, no, no. Don't kid yourself. Well, why now? No, you come with me. I'll show you. Come with me to the jungle. You seen one jungle, you seen them all. You come with me, you see and you like. Hello, Carol. Senor, I'm very much afraid of this monster. Well, let's not pick up and go home. No, I am an officer. We will not stop until we have the scrumbucks. From now on, we'll dive with spear guns. Crazy. Mango! Mango! Senor Happy Chuck, uh, this girl is my daughter. Her name is Mango. Mango? Sí. Oye, me, la novia lo dejó ahora por un idiota y el pobrecito, tú sabes, quería matar. Pero yo le dije que no lo hiciera, que él necesitaba una persona que lo alegrara. Uh, I was telling her what that no good of Carmelita do to you. I was telling her to cheat you up. Oh, gee, thanks, Porcina. But it really wasn't necessary. Oh, do you not like mango? Oh, yeah, I, I like it. Siento mucho lo que le ha pasado, señor. Es algo que le pasa a todo el mundo con mucha frecuencia. Es lo mejor. She no speak good English, señor. Well, I don't think that's going to matter at all. Okay, uh, I'm going back now. Mr. Pete Peterson Jr. He is waiting for me now. Well, adios, por señor. Adios. Are you all right, Porcina? Oh, I'm all right, my hero. <laughs> hey, who was happy, Jack? Oh, come on. I'll take you to them. Them? Yes. Tú eres muy dulce, aunque un poco estúpido. Oh, I don't know what you said, Mango. But it sure was wonderful. Mi madre quiere que yo sea agradable con los extranjeros. Es como una especie de bienvenida para los turistas. I feel the same way, Mango. Well, I never felt like this in my whole life. A ella le gusta que yo los entusiasme para poder venderle sombreros de palma de coco y sandalias. Oh, I know, Mango. I know. Well, here come Pete and Porcina. Se parecen a los premios más baratos en una galería de tiro. Hi, Jack. Who's your friend? Well, this is Mango Perez, Porcina's daughter. Gee! She's almost as pretty as her mother. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, but can't you do imitations? Well, I don't know. And I don't care, because I love her. Gosh, you're going to marry her? Yeah, well, why not? 
Why not? If you marry Mango, and I marry Porcino, I'll be your father. Woo! What kind of a boy call was that? Oh, we cannot talk here. We cannot talk. My Mushu gonna talk you. He may be trouble. Yeah, I just had a fight with him. You know, Pete, I'm getting tired of all this running around. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to marry Mango and settle down here. Well, I could start a tennis club. They don't have clubs. They have rackets. You know, you're right. But you know something, though? I'd like to do the same thing myself. Say, why don't we rub them all out? And this way, we can keep the strong box for ourselves? Oh, yes. Well, even Mary Bell? Oh, gee. I don't know about her. Well, she is my sister. Of course, we could keep her around to do the housekeeping. Sure. And she'll get over losing Renzo. Sure. Well, how about it? Is it a deal? Sure. Besides, they've been cheating on their income tax anyway. Ay, ya, yo me estoy cansando de esta jeringonza. Vamos a nadar, ¿quién? Uh, Mango, she won't go swimming. All right, oh, that's go. Sparks, Sparks, where, where's Pete and the boys? They know we should be diving this afternoon. I think they're somewhere in the jungle. Señor, usted me está proponiendo una cosa sucia, le exige una satisfacción. What's this? What, what is this? This man's wife is playing around with Mr. Pierre. He's very angry. That's tough. Mire, lo único que puedo hacer es venderla. Yo creo que 50 dólares y una caja de caldilla está en orden. This man wants to sell you his wife for $50 in a case of rum. Tell him he's nuts. Ah, uh, dice que está loco. Ken, yo no acepto esa clase de insulto a nadie. Ahora le fijo 100 dólares. Carmelita, will you talk to him? We're busy. Oh, sure. I would tell him to cut down to 20 for a fifth of gin. Gin nothing? Who wants to buy his improbable wife? Come on, General Testado, let's get going. Soldados cubanos, de nuevo a sumergirnos. Una, dos, y... Alright, baby. Listen, you hold out of these because I can't use them without Peter Jack to help me, huh? I'll keep them warm for you. Renzo Capetto had at last found the strong box. And the unknown partner had found Renzo Capetto.
what you have to do, Lorenzo. Why did I have to do what? Don't play games with me. Why'd you kill her? Jack, I swear I had nothing to do. I said don't play games. We all saw the, the same five incisions and those round marks on that stupid toilet plunger. Why'd right, you ask Mary, but I gave her the rakes before I went under. That won't play. You had two more in your trunk, just in case you said, remember? Yeah, I remember, but they're still there. I can't convince them, honey. Maybe you can. Sorry, honey. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to go along with Jack. You think I did it? Well, what else can I think? You made that monster up out of thin air. Now, don't try to tell me it's real. And not that stupid. Well, I am. I always believed in it. But it's gotta be real. Either that or the Cubans are trying to kill us off. I can't buy that. I don't care what you buy. From now on, we're gonna die with spirit like the rest of them. We've got to get rid of the rest of those Cubans as quickly as possible. Now, we'll start tomorrow morning with Tostado. Jack? Yes. Pete? Possible death notwithstanding. The courageous general and two of his men dove once more into the deadly sea. But, as usual, they were not alone. Renzo waited for them to separate. One pulled away and then there were two. Tostada went on alone into the forbidding void, with the killers closing in. The giant observer stood watching over a pathetic bit of cloth, all that remained of mango. At last, Tostada had found his gold in his own watery grave. The general died as all generals should. His greedy murderers let his body drift away while they congratulated each other. Happy Jack found the scrap of a dress and knew what had happened to his beloved. Suddenly. You've got to leave, Mary Bell, and there's no one to help you but me. Oh, Mary Bell, I love you so much I could split. Just get on. What do you do to my man? Oh, shut up. Oh. Oh, it was dusk. 
I could tell because the sun was going down. You were right, senor. All my army is finished. I know when the generals died. I don't care about the box and more let the monster give it. I don't want him to kill any more of my men. Neither do I, Colonel. I think we must go to Ciudad Trujillo in the morning. You can go anywhere you like. I'm going home. To America? America? No, I can't go back there anymore. Sicily. Oh. I got an uncle there who's been after me for years to help him stamp grapes. It's beginning to appeal to me. Mary Bell hates me. I know. But I love you. It's kind of nice having somebody love you. Why don't you try to love me? You might like it. I guess I can try. She pressed her hot Latin lips against mine, and I forgot everything but Carmelita. But our silent partner was not going to let me forget. This was it. There was but one thing a responsible, trusted representative of the United States government could do at a time like this. Get out of there. All right, Bill. Honey, I'd just like one more chance to explain. Please. It's all right, Whoopsie. It doesn't really matter. No matter where you go or what you do or whom you kill. I'll love you till the day I die. Mary Bell, but he was the skipper and decided to go down ahead of his ship. in a monastery? Carmelita, I love you and I, I want to marry you and take you away from all this. Mm, that I would like it, I think. Of course, we'd have to live on the salary of an American spy, which is $41.50 a week. I don't care. You're so strong, so intelligent. You see how you solve the whole case? You're the smartest tool peel in the whole world. I'm not really as smart as I look, Carmelita. You see, I, I have to admit that all that time, I thought Renzo and the Cubans were trying to steal that strong box. But I was wrong. The real killer was the monster. So what? You're beautiful. So I got the girl. And guess who got the gold?
And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.